Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is warning that Russia will likely continue its wave of attacks on energy infrastructure. It comes as the mayor of Kyiv says that residents may want to consider temporarily relocating before the city's power and water supply is further targeted. Well, millions of people are currently without electricity across the country. And joining us now is the Deputy Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine, Alexandra Azarkina. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today here on Euronews. Uh, when it comes to infrastructure being targeted in Ukraine right now, how dire, how bad is the situation? The situation, of course, is bad, but it's not something we couldn't expect before, because we understand that failures on the federal front line, they made Putin act and actually attack the civil infrastructure. We had that just at the beginning of the full-scale invasion, and now it just became more targeted and we understand that it's also around the, our resilience and it um, will make influence not only frontline but also on the life of ordinary Ukrainians. Myself, I'm sitting now in Kiev, my child just, you know, in five minutes from me sitting in a dark flat. How like a good for us, we do have water supplies for now, but it's became, you know, the bad habit now having just, you know, three to four hours of electricity per day. So yeah, it's discomfortable for sure. But I think that's not something that we cannot fight. Well, thank you for sharing that personal perspective as well about how you and, and your child are experiencing it and, of course, millions of people across the country. Uh, but are you now preparing for longer blackouts? So for sure, it all starts with the air defense. Unfortunately, all of us, you know, civilian ministers are mostly focusing now on the air defense because it proved to be the you know core question how to protect our facilities and, first of all, our cities. Uh, but aside of that, uh, our infrastructure, including transport infrastructure, energy infrastructure, we're working to prepare the facilities and to be more resilient against all kinds of attacks. Uh, for sure, there are some possibility to organize, you know, so-called passive defense. But again, it's never enough. So and we understand that if Russia will still have more of new capabilities, new weapons, as, for example, Iranian provided drones that would well make us more problems and the only solution we have now it's just to decentralize all processes to make uh, all possible ways to support the cities support the critical infrastructure and frankly speaking majority of ukrainians are looking in for the solutions to be more independent and energy efficient on their own houses and even their you know uh, blocks and apartment blocks are trying to find some solutions uh, which will allow them to use the water and the heating systems when the central systems are not so resistant. I want to ask about that resilience and the morale of people, because as you say, this is away from the front lines. This is affecting civilians' everyday lives. How are they feeling amid all of this when they're experiencing three to four hours, for example, of blackouts when it could get worse? What is their morale like? You know, I saw the um, uh, research based on the social media from Ukraine and the major emotion was actually anger. And that's, you know, something which drives you to, you know, to motivate you to consider your normal work as a part of this, you know, big fight because we're fighting for our normality. But of course, um, there are some fatigues as well. Uh, for sure, it's not so easy and especially for the people who are not so, you know, like um, independent and people who do have some problems with the health, etc. So it's not easy for everyone. And for sure, we just need to be tough and, you know, pray for our armed forces as well to stop this as soon as possible. But anger, unfortunately, became one of the leading emotions. Now, I know, uh, as we've been in correspondence, that you've also been having meetings with President Zelensky himself. What has his main messages been to you with regards to infrastructure and, and what's to come in this conflict? He's very practical in our tasks to us. So, first of all, we are focusing on those, you know, let's say survival projects. And our main goal when we have liberated cities, uh, we are going there just after the army people and people who are demining territories to clean the roads, to reestablish transport um, connectivity, to bring back 
so-called normal life as soon as possible. That's the key task for us on this survival phase. Of course, one of the key responsibilities of our team is a grain initiative, and it's important not only for Ukraine, Ukrainian economic, but also for the world food security. But also, we keep talking about the future. We're not only planning, but we're also trying to start build new institutions for the future. For example, one of the projects we are working together with the president himself, it's uh, the way how we will uh, rebuild Crimea after the liberation. Myself, I'm from Crimea, so my family moved out there after the occupation by Russia. And for sure, it's important for me even personally to think ahead and to understand that it's not possible to reestablish rule of law before cleaning all the territory and reestablishing the sovereignty for Ukraine. And yes, uh, President, you know, keeping um, his attention to these topics and the most probably important thing that we are always talking about people first, investment to the people, education, the things I was trying to, you know, explain uh, how the children are trying to keep studying in the shelters. That's important as well, because there's a the future. Absolutely. Alexandra Azarkina, the Deputy Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you very us. much. Thank you. Bye.